The music stopped. <laughs> uh, well, good morning, everyone. Oh boy, we gotta try that again. Good morning, everyone. Yeah, there we go. Now that sounds a lot better. And welcome to church this wonderful and beautiful Sunday morning. Uh, welcome to all those joining us online over Zoom and those who will be joining us uh, when they watch it on YouTube at some point. Uh, this is the time we take to welcome and share in any announcements that we may have. So are there any announcements? Of course, I have some, but are there any announcements to be shared in the congregation? or online. Well, then I'll begin with my announcements. Um, first off is next Sunday is our rally and kickoff Sunday. And so please join us as we come together and uh, really ignite the year and talk about all of the fun things that we're going to be doing this year and uh, come together and hear from all of the different committees on who uh, and what they do on, on their committees, and also join together in um, really just starting off our calendar year like we know and enjoy doing every year. I want to also say make time afterwards next Sunday to stick around. We're going to have some outdoor games and some root beer floats that the worship committee is sponsoring. So uh, please do stick around for a fun fellowship time, and that'll all be back here on our wonderful back lawn that we are so blessed with. Uh, October 1st, or not October 1st, but October 3rd, which is the first Sunday in October, is our World Communion Sunday. But it's also a special Sunday for us because we are going to be welcoming new members on that Sunday. And so I please, please invite everyone to join in in that ceremony. It's a wonderful time for us to covenant with them as they covenant with us and we join in membership together. We will, after that service, be having cupcakes in the fellowship area. And so please join us for that. And then if you feel so inclined, we are also having our fall cleanup that, at, that day. And so it will go church service, cupcakes, fall cleanup, and then a potluck after the fall cleanup because we are going to want to celebrate in all of the wonderful work that we will have done. And I just know that God is going to bless us with a beautiful fall Sunday to rake leaves and do weeding and gardening and all of the other projects that um, we just need to do from time to time in order to beautify our places outside. We will have a sign-up sheet in the back. I don't know if it's back there yet, but uh, we will have one uh, coming up for people to sign up for what you would be bringing to that potluck and if you'll be showing up to the cleanup. So look forward to that. Uh, this is one of those things that falls into many hands make light work. And so we're not planning on working for very long, just a couple of hours, but if you have a truck and a trailer, that always helps. If you know how to work a rake, that helps. If you just love to get down on your hands and knees and pull weeds, doesn't everyone just love to get down on their hands and knees and pull weeds? <laughs> uh, every little bit helps. Yeah. Yeah. De and Deborah will take those weeds and turn them into beautiful floral displays. Yes. 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 <laughs> so, um, but please come out. It's not so much, I guess, about the cleanup. It is about the cleanup, but it's also about spending time with one another in work together uh, for this church, which God has blessed us with. Um, my other announcement I want to do is to give an update on Jay Spillum. Jay is still in the hospital at Abbott Northwestern and still in need of our prayers. He had another procedure um, a couple days ago now and um, is slowly recovering, but in still definitely in need of our prayers, and the family um, is hanging in there, and they're spending lots of good family time together, but they also are in need of our prayers. Let's see. Uh, the Jumpin' Jehoshaphat's concert on Sunday, September 26th at Graham United Methodist Church. Uh, is a fun event that we wanted to announce if anyone wants to go to that. All proceeds from that will benefit the Haiti Partnership. And so uh, we have come together in our congregation 
and raised wonderful amounts of funds and fellowship for the Haiti partnership. Uh, and so that's just another opportunity to get out and be in community with partner churches and to celebrate that. If you are taking Mary Lou up on her offer of um, a get-together beforehand, please contact, go and see hers and let her know so she knows how many to plan for and what to plan for. And then she can kind of also give you important information like address and time and all of that sort of stuff. So I kind of went through a lot of announcements there. Uh, if you're ever wondering about what's going on in our church or in our community, we usually have announcement slides playing about 15 minutes prior to the service every Sunday. And so if you get here a little early and you're wondering what to do, you can always look on the screen and we have wonderful announcements that will cycle through there. Obviously, there's a lot going on in our church and our community that we can't announce from the pulpit every week, <clears throat> but we do put on the slides. Did I spur any announcements in anyone else as I was going on and on? Well, then what a gracious and beautiful and glorious day our Lord has made for us. Let us indeed prepare for worship and join in this moment of reflection. Will you please rise as you are able in mind, body, or spirit, <clears throat> and let us join in our call to worship together. Our call to worship is printed in your bulletin, or words will be up on your screen. <clears throat> Stir up the wills of your people, O God. Move us into new ways of living. Stir up the minds of your people, O God. Move us into deeper ways of thinking. Stir up the hearts of your people, O God. Move us into fuller ways of loving. Stir us thoroughly, O God. Let us worship you anew. And let us indeed do so by continuing our worship with our prayer of invocation. God of all glory, be with us now as we join together in worship. Open our eyes to see and our ears to hear. For the heavens display your glory, and the earth bursts forth with your beauty. Make known to us your law, O Lord, which is perfect. Revive our souls and make wise the simple. Awaken us to your teachings, that we may rejoice in our hearts at the commandment of the Lord. Enlighten our path, that we may endure forever when we follow the righteous ordinances of our God. Then our days will be sweeter than honey, and our lives more desirable than gold. So send us your Holy Spirit, that we may be inspired and fulfilled through your divine revelation, your eternal presence, and your infinite grace. We humbly pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.
Our opening hymn this morning is Blessed Jesus at Thy Word. It's in the Methodist hymnal number 596, which is the blue hymnal either in front or behind you, or words are also on the screen. Blessed Jesus at Thy Word. Jesus at thy word, we are gathered all to hear thee. Let our hearts and souls be stirred, now to seek and love and fear thee. By thy teaching, sweet and holy, drawn from earth to Please be seated. As we come together each and every Sunday, confession is an important part of our worship together. Confession brings all of our sins to bear at the feet of our God who forgives all our sins. And so indeed, let us join today together in our prayer of confession printed in your bulletin or words on your screen. Merciful God, how come it is that we can know in the depths of our hearts what we should and should not do, and yet we do the exact opposite? Whether it is taming our tongue so as to not spread falsehoods or gossip, whether it is offering ourselves to lift others up through Christian compassion, whether it is offering love instead of hate, we all fall short, somehow, sometime, somewhere. So forgive us when we let pride rule over us, anger conquer us, fear hold us back, resentment guilt us, impatience tempt us, and greed possess us. We need your love. We need your forgiveness. Gracious God, we need you. Amen. And hear now these words of assurance. God forgives the confessed and repentant heart. Christ promises that anyone who believes in him has been set free. The Holy Spirit inspires us to live into the gift of grace guaranteed by the cross. So let us trust that we are indeed accepted, forgiven, and loved. Thanks be to God. Amen. As we now come to our moment of sharing of God's peace, again we come in this time where we have to share our peace apart from each other, whether it is sitting next to one another or far away because of the current level of infection in our area, we are doing, are doing our sharing of peace contactless. So, this allows us to trust in God even more, to trust that there indeed is power in prayer, to trust indeed that our faith is stronger than even physical touch. And so let us share in a moment of peace 
as we share God's peace with each other and our world. And let all God's people say, Amen. Our scripture readings today will be read by Ayla. Thank you, Ayla. The first reading is Proverbs chapter 1, verses 20 through 33. Wisdom cries out in the street, the squares as she raises her voice. On the busiest corner she cries out, as the entrance of the city gate she speaks. O long, O how long, O simple one, will you love being simple? How long will soft scoffers delight in their scoffing and fools hate knowledge? Give heed to my reproof, I will pour out my thoughts to you. I will make my words known to you, because I have called and you refused have stretched out my hand and said no one heeded. And because you have ignored all my counsel and would have none of my reproof, I also will laugh at your calamity, will mock when panic strikes you, when panic strikes you like a storm, and when your calamity comes like a whirlwind, when distress and anguish comes upon you. Then they will call upon me, but I will not answer. They will seek me diligently, but will not find me. Because they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord, would choose not have my counsel, despised of my reproof. Therefore they shall eat the fruit of their way and be sated with their own devices. For waywardness kills the simple and the complaint Complacency of fools destroys them, but those who listen to me will be secure and will live at ease without dread of disaster. The second reading is James chapter 3, verses 1 through 12. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers and sisters, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness, for all of us make many mistakes. Anyone who makes no mistakes in speaking is perfect, able to keep the whole body in check with a bridle. If we put bits into the mouths of of horses to make them obey us, we guide their whole bodies. Or look at ships, though they are so large that it takes strong winds to drive them, yet they are guided by a very small rudder wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts with great exploits. How great a forest is set ablaze by a small fire, and the tongue is a fire. The the tongue placed among our members as a world of iniquity is stains the whole body, sets on fire the cycle of nature and itself set on fire by hell. For every species of bead and bird, beast and bird, of reptile and sea creature can be tamed and has been tamed by the human species, but no one can tame the tongue, a restless evil full of deadly poison. With it we bless the Lord and God, and with it we curse those who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this ought not to be so. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening both fresh and brackish water? Can a fig tree, my brothers and sisters, yield olives or a grapevine figs? 
No more can salt water yield fresh. Our second hymn today is Teach Me, O Lord, Your Holy Way. It's from the New Century Hymnal 465. And because I think this is a relatively new hymn for us, we're going to have Maxine play through it once so you get the tune. You'll recognize the tune immediately. It's a very familiar tune. But the words will be on your screen after she plays through once. We'll sing. I'd like to call the children's forward for the children's message or those who are young at heart. Do we have any children joining us online? Hopefully later. We're all children of God, right? Welcome. I almost forgot your microphone. Hello, 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 hello. That's four, right? Hello, 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 hello. How are you all today? Good. Well, here's the children's message. What? It's black? Oh, there's nothing up there? Oh, there's children's message. That's the children's message. How about a round of applause for our children, everyone? No, no, no. no. <laughs> Today we're going to be talking about signs and what they mean to us and all those sorts of things. And so <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're going to pull up some pictures one at a time, and we want to talk about them and see well, what kind of signs and what kind of things these mean, okay? I don't want to just put them all up there because that would get rid of some surprise. So let's see the first. So what do you think is going on in this picture? What is this? I know it's kind of hard to see, but I had to fit a bunch of pictures on one screen. First miracle! Way to go, Nora! Round of applause for Nora. What is, what is the first miracle, Nora? When God changed water into wine. When Jesus changed water into wine at the wedding of, you remember? Yeah, it's not as important, but the wedding of Cana. 
The water and the wine is the important part, right? And so this is Jesus' first miracle that he ever performs, right? All right, how about the next picture? Oh, what's happening here? Anybody? When Jesus turns the blind man so he can see. Yes, this is when Jesus heals the blind man. And I'm very thankful because none of you said what I first thought when I saw it. It looks to me like Jesus is picking the blind man's nose. Doesn't, that, doesn't it look like that? You're never going to be able to get that out of your mind now. That's the first time I ever saw that. I saw, what is Jesus doing? But you're very right, Ayla, you're very right. Jesus is healing the blind man. So this is another what that Jesus does. Miracle. Another miracle of Jesus. Very good. How about our next picture? What's this one? Anyone? Madeline Prescott? What do you see up there? A stained glass fish picture? Yeah, but what's in the picture? You see, what's in the picture? What's in the stained glass picture? Fish. Fish. And? What do you think? We talked about the miracle at Cana. We talked about the miracle of the blind man. It's bread. Bread. Loaves and fishes, right? So this is another what of Jesus. Miracle. Right, because Jesus provided loaves and fishes for over, what, like 5,000, 10,000, 12,000, whatever number you're counting, people. All right, next picture. Oh, What's this? Um, the birth of baby Jesus. Yes, can you say it louder, Nora? The birth of baby Jesus. The birth of baby Jesus, yes. So we see everyone gathered around there. Wait a second, though, I thought we were talking about, you know, here's a miracle of Jesus. There's a miracle of Jesus. There's another miracle of Jesus. Is this, what's this? This is a miracle. This is a miracle? Why is it a miracle? Because he came to save us all. Right. It's a miracle because Jesus came to save us all. So even though Jesus didn't perform this miracle, it was actually Jesus indeed performing this miracle, right? That's pretty, that's pretty funny, isn't it? All right. And our last one. Well, I certainly hope you all four... How about at the count of three, all four of you say what this is, loud and clear. One, two, three. <laughs> a miracle of the cross, right? Why is the cross a miracle? Prescott, Madeline? Because Jesus died on the cross to save our sins. It's, it's ultimately, one, we may be able to say, the, one of the last miracles, right? But what does the cross also represent? that he died for our sins, but what, why isn't Jesus still on that cross? Because he was resurrected and he's going to come again. The ultimate miracle. Amen? So, you guys did great because you caught on that we were talking about all of these miracles. And as we talked about all of these miracles, and we're going to talk about signs later on, it's important for us to remember all of the ways that Jesus has worked in our lives. So can you piece this together about all of the ways Jesus has worked in our lives? The wedding at Cana was where Mary had to ask Jesus to perform his first miracle. So sometimes we too need to ask for Jesus to perform miracles. They don't just happen on their own. Healing the blind man, Jesus helps us to see, to hear, to know how we can be better. Loaves and fishes, that might be pretty straightforward, but God provides us what? All we could ever need. All we have to do is trust. All we have to do is trust in the miracle of Christ's birth, that God would so love us to send us a Savior, and then the ultimate miracle of the cross, which is? Jesus died and was resurrected for us. Amen? So now when you see a sign, maybe not like yield or stop or anything like that, 
But when you see these signs or hear about Jesus' signs, you'll know that they're not indeed just signs, but what? Miracles. Miracles. Amen? Amen. Let us all pray. Blessed God, indeed, there are four miracles of yours on stage right here. There are multiple miracles sitting around in the congregation and those afar. And there's multiple signs, God, that you love us. Whether it's the miracles we hear about through your holy word or the miracles we experience in our lives. God, we just thank you for all of the ways in which you are still speaking, still talking, still working in our lives forever to set us free. We thank you for that cross upon which you died all those thousands of years ago and for the eternal life that you are actively preparing for us while we live our lives here on earth. Please be with our little ones as they continue to grow and learn. And indeed, be with all of us. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. How about a round of applause for our children? Thank you, children. What the children didn't say, which I thought maybe one of them might say, is the final miracle is that this children's message will end at some time. Our gospel reading today comes from the book of Mark, chapter 8, verses 11 through 21. Hear these words about Jesus. The Pharisees came and began to argue with him, asking him for a sign from heaven to test him. And Jesus sighed deeply in his spirit and said, Why does this generation ask for a sign? Truly, I tell you, no sign will be given to this generation. And he left them, and getting into the boat again, he went across to the other side. Now the disciples had forgotten to bring any bread, and they had only one loaf with them in the boat. And he cautioned them, saying, Watch out. Beware the yeast of the Pharisees and the yeast of Herod. And they said to one another, It is because we have no bread. And becoming aware of it, Jesus said to them, Why are you talking about having no bread? Do you still not perceive or understand? Are your hearts hardened? Do you have eyes and fail to see? Do you have ears and fail to hear? And do you not remember when I broke the five loaves for the five thousand? How many baskets full of broken pieces did you collect? They said to him, Twelve. And the seven for the four thousand? How many basket full of broken pieces did you collect? And they said to him, Seven. Then he said to them, Do you not yet understand? The word of our Lord. Will you please pray with me? Blessed God, indeed, open our ears to hear, our eyes to see, our hearts to understand any of the signs or words or ways in which you are speaking to us, God, that indeed not just our worship, but all that we do would bring glory to your holy name. Amen. A sign. We won't go through the same exercise with you all, since you already got the cheat sheet, thanks to the children, about what all these miracles represent and the sign that they represent. But we hear in this wonderful gospel passage about Jesus talking about a sign. And so in honor of it being craft fair weekend, and because one of the very few things that we tend to collect in our household our crafty signs, I brought a little show and tell for us today. So, I also thought, you know, the children are the only ones who get show and tell most of the time, and so why not have us have show and tell too? So, these are all signs from our house. 
This one says, this is your happy place. This is our happy place. A sign to remind us that it's our happy place, right? This sign says, pray, wait, trust. Always good to remember to do those three things. This sign says, dwell in the possibilities. And because you can't read all of the things, it says, you can do it. Imagine if. Climb every mountain. Nothing can stop you. Take the path less traveled. I'd pass them around, but I want to keep these signs at the end. too. This sign says, I love Steamboat. Yeah! Just uh, like I would ever need reminding of that, but. <laughs> this sign says, live, laugh, love. And if you've seen the recent commercials on TV, yes, you need this sign. <laughs> this sign says, the greatest adventure is what lies ahead and has a map of the world. But the sign that speaks the loudest and the sign that in fact is the most important to me of all of our signs that we have up is a sign that doesn't actually have any words on it at all. A sign that we don't have out in a lot of the areas that have words so everyone can read what it says, but a sign that we keep up on the wall, always knowing, indeed, what the greatest sign is. You recognize it. It's the cross. And this sign is so important and speaks so much louder for many of the reasons the kids told us today. But one of the reasons why that sign is the most important for us, is that it's not just about Christ's death and resurrection, but also about how Christ lived. About how Christ indeed was so angry with this generation that he was trying to teach and lead in his time. So angry with a world that he was just trying to get the message across. You see, in this gospel, Jesus had literally, literally just fed thousands of people. And then the Pharisees asked him for a sign. And after he says, I will not give a sign, he literally promises the disciples that no matter what happens, he's going to take care of them. And yet, they still want a sign and need a sign. Jesus is active, active in our lives at all times. We have all of the signs that we could ever want or need. We have all of the wisdom of our world that we could ever possibly want or need. We know everything it is that we should and should not be doing in order to live our lives. And yet, we, just like the Pharisees, just like the disciples, ask for signs. It's important to have signs to remind us of what we need to do and not do. Perhaps your house is decorated in a similar fashion, or maybe it is not. But the sign that we must hold truest to is this powerful love that was indeed unconditional, eternal, and everlasting, and so forgiving that God would give everything to give us the ultimate sign. You see, in our world, which is going by faster and faster, quicker and quicker, I feel like we are not slowing down to listen and follow the signs. We speed through our lives and we say, Jesus, 
God, if you would only give me a sign, I would know. If you would only grant me this, I would know. If you would only do this, I would just know. And yet Jesus has already given us everything we need. We have eyes to see our world that is falling apart right before us. Our world that is suffering from increasingly worse and worse climate effects. Worse and worse viruses. Worse and worse famine and death and destruction. We have been given a sign. We have the ears to hear the cries of the needy in our community. We have the ears to hear how when someone indeed, as James tells us, uses their tongue both for blessing and for cursing. We have the ears to hear those words from Scripture that can speak to us and remind us of this wonderful, wonderful sign. And we have been given a 21st century gift that no other generation before us has. No other generation than those here can boast about the wisdom that we have in our society. And yet, we ask for a sign. Give us a sign that the pandemic will be ending. Give us a sign that we can find a cure for X, Y, or Z. Give us a sign that we can get rid of famine and drought and death and destruction in our world. And Jesus says, God says, you have all of this wisdom. And yet, you don't see the signs. This is the power of the cross, my friends. Because this isn't the first time, as we heard from our readings today, that a generation of people has ignored the signs all around them. This isn't the first time that a generation has not just needed to be reminded about the happy place they live in, how they need love, how they should be adventurous and yet trusting in their God, how they should pray and wait and hope for God to work in their lives. But this is a generation that seemingly is demanding more and more of a sign when Jesus tells us we have everything we need in the cross. A cross where our God loved us so much that we, Jesus was sacrificed to save our souls and forgive our sins. Our cross which represents not just death but also life and eternal life. Our cross upon which we can place all of our fears and doubts and troubles. Our cross, which is this sign, whether it be made of wood of this size, that size, or bronze, or whether you don't have a cross to hang at all, Jesus has given us the ultimate sign. And so as we go about our days, as we go about our lives, as we consider our generation, we have a decision to make. We have a decision to make about whether we are still going to be those people that Jesus asks, do you not have eyes to see? Have you not heard? Do you not yet still understand that you have been given the miracles of Cana, the miracles of having your eyes open, the miracles of having everything you could ever need or want provided for you through the birth, life, death, and resurrection of our God. But we have to decide. Are we, in fact, going to listen to the sign, follow the sign, have trust in this sign? My hope is that you all somewhere in your world have something that reminds you of this moment, of this sign, of this message of Christ. 
whether it be a cross on the wall or whatever it may be. So that when you have those moments in your life, when you feel like there's nothing that you can do, nowhere you can go, no one that can help you, and you're praying on your knees for God to give you a sign that you would be reminded of our Savior's ultimate love, His ultimate sacrifice, and His unconditional and eternal grace that He grants to us all. What a wonderful sign. Amen. Will you please pray with me? Blessed God, we indeed come here today and admittedly, perhaps our ears are closed. Perhaps our eyes have scales over them. Perhaps we have hardened hearts. But we come here today, God, and are so thankful to you that through your word and through our worship, all of that can be opened and wiped away and softened by your sign, by your cross, by your love. We long to gather and to praise you, our eternal God. We long to hear these words about wisdom and about speaking correctly and about living our lives as if we trust indeed in your Holy Son. And so, God, fill us with your Holy Spirit. Inspire us, strengthen us, enliven us to go and live that way in our lives, in our world, in our everyday. We know, God, that these pictures, these signs, this building, our lives themselves are but a gift from you a gift that can be taken at any moment, a gift that can be given at any moment. And so, God, as we long to know how to live and how to practice, how to be the hands and feet that you long for for your world, help us to trust in your miracles. Help us to listen to the signs. Help us, God, to find ourselves in your footsteps not demanding or asking for a sign, but knowing and trusting from deep within us that you have already placed your love therein, your spirit there within, you, God, within each and every one of us. God, our world is a complicated and mixed up place. Our news speaks of hate and greed, jealousy and murder. Our world speaks of disunity and doubt. And our hearts are softened in fear or hardened in fear. But God, burst into our lives. Fill us with your strength, your purpose, your will to act, and an open arm that can reach out to this world that needs to know your love even more. For it is only through your love that our world will ever heal. It is only through your love that our world will ever know of this wonderful and glorious sign that you gave for us. And so, God, help us as you have gifted us with this wonderful, unconditional grace and mercy. Be that sign to our world as we carry it forth within us so that everyone would know, indeed, you are alive. You are our love. And yet today we come here today, Lord, with prayers on our heart and prayers in our community and so we want to lift those up now. Are there any prayers of our community we need to lift up today? I 
I want to lift up the Halls and Andersons families with the loss of Steve and Kathy in the last two weeks. Lord, have mercy. Definitely want to lift up Jay and Diane and all of their family as they battle through recovering from surgery. I want to lift up all of those who died in the September 11th attacks over 20 years ago, those who continue to suffer from selflessly volunteering and giving their lives to the help of those who need your help the most, Lord. I want to pray for those continuing to battle wildfires, recovery and cleanup after hurricanes, the extensive drought in our country and around the world, our friends in Haiti, other prayers from our community. Then let us take a moment and join our prayers with the prayers we pray in silent praying that God would reach those places that words cannot. And let us join all of our prayers together as we sing our Lord's Prayer song. We now come to a time of holy offering, a time for us to indeed give back from those places that God has gifted us. If you have brought monetary offering, our church gladly thanks you, and we have places set up around the sanctuary, which are contact lists where you can deposit that. But if during this time you have felt the call to share a sign, or you have seen a sign or heard a sign of how God is working in your lives, 
Pray about that. Enact that in your life because that truly is a holy offering as well. We have the blessing, and I forgot to announce this earlier, of Diana and Maxine playing for us today and Amanda and Prescott behind the scenes. But one of the blessings that Diana gets to share with us from time to time is her flute. And so for our offering today, enjoy this piece that Diana and Maxine are playing together. you all now rise as you're able in mind, body, or spirit as we join in our doxology together. join in our prayer of dedication. Almighty God, grant that our offering may be used to bring your grace, mercy, hope, peace, and love to the world, that the ways we give would speak louder than any tongue, that our gifts we give could allow others to find their voice, so your name would be exalted throughout the earth. Through Christ we pray. Amen. Amen, indeed. Before we sing our closing hymn, if you but trust in God to guide you, where the words will be on your screen, I do want to invite everyone to fellowship time afterwards, just straight through these doors back here. We do have tables set up at four persons per table, and that's purposeful because the in-person worship team has regarded that as safe social distancing, so please respect that as we gather together and try to fellowship in these difficult times. But let us now sing, If You But Trust in God to Guide You. If you but trust in God to guide you with hopeful
sing pray and keep god's ways unswerving offer your service joyfully and trust god's word though undeserving there find the truth to set you And so, my brothers and sisters, as we go forth from this place, this is merely wood and stick if it is not filled and enacted upon by the flesh of our bodies. This is merely a sign that has no action in the world if it is not acted upon by our love. This is merely but a cross if we do not trust in the God who sent us unconditional grace and sends that grace for the entire world. So take this sign, the sign on your heart, the sign of Christ's love and compassion for our world, and let us share that with the entire world. Let us go in the peace of Christ, brothers and sisters. Amen.